Uh, today, I didn't put the scripture up, so uh, and if you could open up your pew Bibles to 843, we can follow along in our Bibles together uh, for the scripture today, and we can read that. And this is a scripture lesson that we find that uh, is used a lot for this idea of understanding righteousness, understanding what it means to be uh, an individual who lives in a right way for God. It's a, it's a passage that John Wesley, the founder of the United Methodist Church, used in his sermon that he titled Righteousness by Faith. It's something that he found that this passage is something that all of us can pull from it what it means to live out our life. So it's, it's Romans, 5, or Romans 10, 5-8. It starts with Moses. So Moses considered a righteous person. Moses described in this way the righteous that is by the law. Okay, so this is Moses describing the law. The man who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, Do not say in your heart you will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or you, or who will descend into the deep. That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what righteousness is, what it says, is that the Word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the Word of faith we are proclaiming. And so we see right here, righteousness is not something that we just set up and say that's only something that Christ can do. It's only something that God can do. But what we recognize is that righteousness can be seen on this earth through you. It's near to you. It's in your mouth. It's in the things that you do. Righteousness is something that God is calling you to be. He is calling you to be an individual who lives right for God. And that can be a challenge. There's no question about that. But that's what we see in the Scripture lesson today. Righteousness is something that is supposed to be what you are. It's how you are supposed to be living. It's your action in your life. That's what you are supposed to be. You are supposed to be righteous. So how do we get to be righteous? I'll just read the next verse. And that is um, verse 9. It says this, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Righteousness by faith. Righteousness by having faith in Jesus Christ. And so that's how we get there. We first have to say and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. That's something that we, we, wanna, we want to proclaim and we want to teach a lot. We see a lot of people that, that do that and we want to say we want to live for Jesus Christ. You've got to say that you want to be a follower of Jesus Christ. The next step though is then that you have to live right for God. <clears throat> and so that's the challenge that we have. Now this is something that I, I think it's interesting. In James one twenty seven, he talks about being unstained by the world. So we need to be, being righteous means that we are going to be unstained by this world. Living out righteousness does not mean to close your eyes to the misery, need, or evil around us, or to create, listen to this, holy huddles that exclude. That is not righteousness. But rather, righteousness is being in the midst of the world to fix minds and to take our joy from what is good. So a lot of times what can happen in righteousness is that we can get on our our mountain and just stay there and say, I'm better than you. I'm holier than you. I'm Christian. I'm better than you. And that has happened far too often in the church. And that is very sad. Righteousness is a point where you get down and you get dirty. Righteousness is understanding that you are God's mouth and you are God's hands to go and tell other people of Jesus Christ so that then they can become saved, so that then they can live a righteous lives. And then it says that becoming righteous does not mean becoming prim or prudish or obsessed with rules. I like that one. Too often we just people think that Christianity is all about rules. Uh, the only rule I ever, I, if it's a rule, is to love God and love your neighbor. That's pretty good. Everything else will fall under that. And so, so I love that. Don't be obsessed with rules. That's not what righteousness is about. But righteousness is about this. Cultivating a pure heart and cultivating a mind for Christ. Having a pure heart and a mind to do Christ's will. What, what then is not righteousness? What keeps us from being righteous? What keeps, us from, uh, what keeps us from doing those things that God wants us to do? What keeps us from living right for God? I think there's a lot of things that can, that can come up in that. Uh, Wealth, maybe, sex, pain, resentment, uh, business, 
The job's more important than anything else. A routine. You can just place God in the routine and just brush over it, just like you brush over, you know, paperwork at work or brush over spending time with family. You can just brush right over that. And all of those words then fall into under the umbrella of the world. The world can keep us from living a righteous way. The corruption around us can get to us. Uh, the, the, the problem I think that for a lot of us in living a righteous way is that uh, we don't separate from those things around us. We may do one or two things for Christ, but then everything else just blends in to the rest of the world. And so there's no distinction between our lives for Christ and anything else. And that is a danger. And that is an ill that has been happening for, for all of Christianity is that there have been those individuals who have placed themselves on, uh, in the middle or have placed themselves just blended through things and there's no distinction that they have been changed by God's grace. And they choose to do one thing but not another. And so that's the challenge for us is, is once we allow ourselves to let this corruption take place in ourselves, then we begin to blend into the world. And God specifically says in His Gospels, through Jesus Christ, that we are called to be set apart. We are called to be different. God has given us a mission to go and transform this world into His kingdom. And so we can't just fade into the world and become become oblivious to what's around us. And so we need to learn how to keep ourselves from doing this. We need to learn to live in a way that is full of righteousness. We need to learn to pursue holy. For God did say, I want you to be holy as I am holy. God wants us to pursue that with our lives. Wesley talks about how we are to avoid all unnecessary things in our life. Those things can just get between us and God. The song that we sang, Nearer to Thee, uh, nothing, what is that song? What was the second song we sang today? Nothing? Nothing between. That's close enough. Nothing between my Savior. Nothing between myself, myself and my Savior? My soul? Whoa, whoa, okay, okay. My soul and my Savior. Goodness sakes, I, I, I should, I think I read that. So I think I sang, but anyway. So nothing between my soul and my Savior. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. Avoid all of the unnecessary. A way that I've learned to evaluate in my life, I guess, uh, of when I am, if I'm, if I'm pursuing holiness, if I'm pursuing righteousness, is not in the midst of like preaching. Because I mean, how cool is you know how cool I'm a pastor, I'm preaching up here. But anyway, but you know, not in the midst of when your hands are dirty and you're doing that work for the Lord, but in the midst of where you have those opportunities of, of finally throwing on the sweatpants and relaxing, in the midst of being able to uh, sit down and take a breather for a little bit. And then, what do you choose to do? That's where I find out if I'm truly living righteous, if I'm truly living holy, what do I choose to to look up on the internet? What do I choose to watch on TV? What do I choose to read? It's in those moments where we, we let up a little bit. It's in those moments where we become vulnerable and weak. And am I truly doing things that are honoring Christ there? Am I truly honoring Christ when I need to just thank God the weekend is here and I need to let loose? Do I, do I do the things on Friday and Saturday that display that righteous living? That making sure my heart is pure and making sure that my mind is being cultivated for Christ? Making sure that I'm loving God with my whole heart and loving my neighbor as myself? It's in those moments, am I truly living in a righteous way? 